The economy is ruined. A sharp, exaggerated recession is on right now. Many believe it will be over very soon and an equally sharp rebound will occur. Stocks have already begun to price that in. Although the $2 trillion stimulus bill was by far the largest in history, even the governors of the US have complained it's not nearly enough. The Fed is bailing everything in the financial industry out. Will they just monetize the helicopter money too? You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. This is a monster episode I have to cover everything from top to bottom. Let's begin. The $2 trillion spending bill has gone through, it looks like, and we are now seeing what's in that bill. You can look at this particular website where they break everything down and get onto the little nuances. I'm not going to cover it in this video because that's something you can look up on your own. The link will be in the description under the sources. What I found here when I read through it was that there's a lot of fine print. It's not as if every single American is going to get $1,200, every single business is going to get this or that. A lot of fine print, a lot to read through, and there's a lot of red tape. But then again, that was expected. Governors say massive federal stimulus deal falls short. The biggest federal stimulus program in history, like I said, doesn't go far enough for state and localities facing unprecedented financial pressure. It's a $2 trillion deal, but of course, by the time it makes it through all the different departments, all that red tape, there isn't as much left over. Regardless, the truth of the matter is that everyone is bankrupt. When you look at the government, when you look at the corporations, nothing makes sense anymore, and a crisis always exposes that. In just over a week, 47,000 chain stores across the U.S. have shut their doors as retailers have taken extreme measures. Last year, I had some different numbers, but it was over 9,000 stores closed in the U.S. There were also reports of 12,000. Whatever number you want to use, it was very, very large on a historical basis. Now today, we're looking at 47,000 chain stores. Yes. Yes, it's temporary, but how many will reopen on the other side? I have a very good suspicion that if this goes on longer than just a few weeks, this is going to be huge. Right now, I'm sure they're looking through the numbers. Who can we lay off? Which stores can we close? What can we do to quote unquote increase productivity? A snowball effect could be underway. Landlords can't afford to stop collecting rent for long with many property owners sitting on large piles of debt. Again, as always, we have derivatives and these derivatives take all of that debt. All of those different companies here are all saddled with debt. And then what happens is you have this going into a nice little package, put a bow on top of it, and they sell it off to an investor. That's a derivative. Now, nobody really knows what's going on on the inside of all of this and doesn't really matter to them as long as everything keeps moving along. But as soon as you have the defaults and the bankruptcies, this becomes a big issue. We'll talk more about that in a moment. This is just connected in with that U.S. retailers plan to stop paying rent to offset the closures. Again, how long can this possibly go on for? This chart is showing you a timeline of the retail closures and you could see all the different companies, the names you might recognize in here. I just wanted to show you that if you want to, as a reference, check it out. U.S. airline passenger traffic currently 10% of normal. It's nowhere near where it was just a few weeks ago. This has been tumbling, and of course, we know exactly what's going on here. It's all around the world as well. Airlines are getting rid of people. They're stopping flights. But do you think they're going to give discounts? I don't think so. They simply cannot afford to operate. That's the way it goes. S&P downgrades Ford shares to junk status. This is something that I have been talking about for quite a while. You will see the cascade occur, the domino effect. We have some issues going on with a lot of these different corporations. And as I have mentioned before, they are currently at a certain level, okay? Whatever that might be. In this case here, S&P put Ford's credit rating at a BB plus down a notch from BBB minus. All of these 
these things are just what the rating agencies use as their terminology. All you got to know is that it's considered non-investment grade. Once they do that, it becomes higher risk. A lot of these funds cannot sell the junk debt. They can't do it. They're not allowed. So what happens? You get all of the selling occurring, money's flowing out, and you got big problems. Well, that's what's going on right here with Ford. At least that's just the beginning. We'll see if that continues on. And of course, if the situation we have going on globally continues, yes, this is going to impact not just this one company, not just this one sector, but many others. This was a hilarious video that I wanted to stress that everybody needs to watch. The FDIC chairman had said, what we're dealing with right now, unprecedented times, things are crazy, but don't take your money out of the banking system. Everything is safe and sound with us. Now, it might be true, the FDIC will be there to backstop any losses, and that's only because everybody keeps their money in. If even just a small percentage of people would to take all of their money out of the banking system, the Federal Reserve would have to come in and literally bail them out. The FDIC cannot actually bail out a big bank. It is impossible. They don't have enough money. So that way you would have to have the Federal Reserve printing up the money and giving it to them. That's just the way it is. And I thought this was a little bit of humor that everybody should watch. Negative rates come to the U.S. One month and three month treasury bill yields are now below zero. This is happening all over the world and it is a big problem. A lot of people don't realize it, but they were hoping, very much hoping that this wouldn't occur. But when you do such ridiculous activities in the financial system with the quantitative easing and every other method to devalue their currency, of course it's going to happen. They're all heading downward. Now you might see See the negative interest rates we've got them in different countries it's eventually going to have to happen everywhere or at least we'll hit the bottom the zero like the u.s is at zero right now and why because it cannot persist without the easiest monetary policies in history we've got the biggest spending bills in history we've got the biggest quantitative easing in history we've got the lowest interest rates in history all right now and it's barely able to deal with it but of course, you don't need to be worried because your friend and mine, Helicopter Ben, said that there will be a fairly quick rebound, nothing to worry about. Ben Bernanke put on the stage to make everybody feel calm. I'm sure you feel real calm with Ben Bernanke up there, don't you? Postal service will not survive this summer. Lawmakers warn it could go bankrupt. How many different industries, especially those within the government, the ones that the government controls, are going belly up? Look at what's happening with the pension funds. My goodness, they're all bankrupt. It could be because of the way they're run. It could be because of any number of factors. But just look at it. It's everywhere. It's pervasive. The Federal Reserve cannot bail them out. They can't do this. A stimulus package can only get you so far it gives you that running start and then you need to be profitable on your own but that's not the way a lot of these industries operate Speaking of the Federal Reserve, take a look at this. Fed, Treasury, MBS purchases since the restart of QE, $587 billion. That's 2.7% of US GDP. Their balance sheet is growing at a rapid clip. I'll show you it in just a second here. The new numbers will actually come out tomorrow. I will include that in tomorrow's video, but you can see what they've done just over the last few days. $100 25 billion dollars a day right now and surely they will increase if needed this is directly from the federal reserve's website it's 4.7 trillion dollars on their balance sheet this is last week's numbers when they update tomorrow you're going to see them at approximately 5.3 trillion dollars the fed has never printed this much this is already a record as of today as i record this but once we get those numbers you're going to see it at 5.3 trillion dollars it has gone into absurd territory there's no way to stop this they could be screwing everybody over by trying to hyper inflate the economy when that doesn't work you can't print money and make it do anything to the economy yes you can affect asset prices you can try and pump up certain parts of a failing financial system but you cannot support the economy we already learned that back in 2008 
I found this to be interesting. Foreign central bank treasury sales two week cumulative percentage change. Haven't seen this level since back in 2014. So they're selling it off. And then you have the Federal Reserve coming in to rescue them, printing up a whole bunch of money and buying basically everything. Just interesting information. My friends in Norway, check this out. Norway Central Bank has cut its key policy rate to a record low 0.25% from 1% in a bid to alleviate the economic impacts of the situation that's going on all around the world. Wasn't it Norway that just recently was at 1.5% and now it's at 0.25% and they will not hesitate to do it again. They will not rule out a further rate cut so they're going to bring it down to zero percent perhaps they'll bring it even lower i had a few subscribers that were telling me while all the other central banks around the world were bringing their interest rates down norway was bringing their interest rates up everything was totally fine nothing to worry about here in norway now norway is certainly better off than some of the other countries in europe there's no doubt about that but all dominoes will fall you can't change that that's the way it goes Gary Kahn says lawmakers should throw as much money as you can at this economic crisis. That's right, Mr. Former Goldman Sachs revolving door. Put as much money as you can into this. Make sure that my friends at Goldman Sachs get their bailout. JP Morgan, all of the financial institutions, all of the mega corporations, they need their helicopter drop. Now I talked about this on my Instagram and it's basically the great CEO exodus of 2020. Even in 2019, same situation. A record level of CEOs leaving. Now CEOs leave companies all the time. It's just the way it is. But when you see record levels, at the same time, you see a lot of insider selling happening. You start to raise some eyebrows. It starts to put a lot of question marks up. Did they know of something happening? Did they see something? in the future was the market just a little bit too mature there's a lot of questions we need to ask i don't know the answer i want to know what you think more than 108,000 people filed for unemployment benefits in Michigan last week. That's 20 times more than normal. The state-run insurance systems are buckling under the weight of the economic fallout. National jobless claims last week saw the biggest spike since eight years ago, jumping 33%. Big problems in Norway, highest unemployment rate since the 1940s. Canada saw 20 times as many people apply for benefits as last year. And that figure is expected to double this week. There's some serious problems all around the world today. The expectation is V-shaped recovery. That's what stocks are trying to do right now. But of course, if they are met with some issues, those issues, of course, the same ones that have been going on for the last several weeks, this could be a big mistake. It all depends. That's all for this video. If you found it informative, hit that thumbs up button. When you do, you're supporting me. Thank you very much. If you want to see content from me all day long on Instagram, on Twitter, I am very active on both of those. Check me out at The Money GPS. If you want to understand how to sell stuff online, it's becoming more and more apparent that we need that skill. I created this free e-course for you, the AmazonGPS.com. If you want to know what's going on in the financial industry, you actually want to understand it, you actually want to know about it, don't just blindly go in there. you got to start on the ground level and understand it all the way to the top. These two books will do that for you. Check them out. Link in the description. Audiobook, themoneygps.com. Is now the time to buy gold? What about gold? Should I buy gold? Do I like gold? Do I hate gold? Check this out. I broke it down in this video. I'll see you there.